People are simply spirits having human experiences. The true nature of a spirit is androgynous, neither male nor female. There is no gender in the spirit world, which is true nature of existence. Gender is something that is experienced in physical reality, which is a creation of the spirit world. I'm Todd, by the way, and I guess I can consider myself as a regular human being. As a child, I grew up in a family where I knew that I belong. My family owned a business company and we live in a beautiful home. My father is a general in the army, while my mother works as a doctor for a hospital. I love painting. It has been my passion ever since I was a kid. I've always enjoyed the idea of creating an image out of nothing. Constructing an image in my head and then testing myself to see how creative I can portray that picture on a canvas. Being an artist is not an easy task because of the wide population of artists and you really need to have your edge as a painter. I told him that I really love painting and asked him if I can study in New York to enhance my painting skills. But he said no. He said, paint if you want, a hobby or something in your spare time, but first do something to support yourself. My tears filled the ocean as I was drunk in sadness telling myself to be okay. It was so hard, really, really hard, painting in such a relief. Heaviness turned to lightness. The moment I woke up the next morning, I thought that everything would be all right. I stood up hearing an unbearable noise coming from the outside of my room. As I walked out of my room, I saw my parents arguing and shouting at each other for the last time. My mother gave up on our family. that very moment, I knew that I have fallen with Nick. I was so lucky to have him by my side. I couldn't ask for more. Nick is such a good guy. He's very down to earth and anyone would feel lucky to have him. It's such a relief to paint his face. It feels like I don't have any problems whenever I am staring at his face. It was a fine day. Not until my father saw me kissing Nick's painted face. What the hell is this, Todd? Tell me! Dad, let me explain. Explain what? I've seen it with my own eyes. I'm so I'm sorry. Are, you're sorry? You're sorry? Are you gay? Tell me now, are you gay? Are you gay? Yes, Dad, I'm gay. You're nothing to me. That was the worst part of my life knowing that my father 
my own father cannot accept who I am. My own father cannot support me and cannot accept what I love. I held the blade thinking that by ending my life is the only way to escape my problems. I thought that when I am no longer in this world, all my miseries, pain, anxiety will be gone. But there was someone who held me longer. I tried to express my misery to the world through posting tweets about miseries and rants. Someone in the crowd stood by my side to fight Hello? this battle, and that someone was Nick. He inspired Thank me you. to continue my life despite of everyday you. struggle. Thank you for staying by my side. Bye. And now, I am in New York. I got a scholarship to study in New York School of Arts. Luckily, I graduated after four years and got a stable job. Got a house and living now in New York for good. I also have the career I really love, which is painting. I also join marathons and during my spare time, I do running. Hello, Todd. How are you doing? Hi, babe. I'm fine. I just finished the run for this day. I was about to go home right now. You need something? Oh, great. I was supposed to ask you if we could spend the night together. I'll be fine with that. I'll go in home now. Okay, I'll be waiting. Bye, Todd. I still favor running until one day someone unexpected called me. My phone is vibrating. It was father. My own father that I didn't see for a long period of time. What's this? Todd? It's it's me. Yeah. How it's how is it going? That dad? How did you get my number? Nick gave it to me. <coughs> I I I called you because it's been ten long years since you've talked. Ten long years of not seeing each other. Ten long years of not hearing from you. I miss you, son. 
I cannot believe what I just heard. My father saying all of those things, saying how much he missed me. I thought he no longer cared for me. But then, he called me first after 10 long years. Could, could I ask if you could go home now? Since it's almost, it's almost Christmas. <coughs> I want to celebrate it with you. It's been a lot of Christmas and so we haven't seen each other. I... <coughs> I really, really hope you could come. I already hung up the phone. I don't know what to say or what to react. I don't know if I wanted to grant my father's wish or no. But I think it's already time to see him, to reconcile with him, to build again the broken relationship we had as father and son. I think it's time to heal and repair our broken hearts. I decided to come to my father's home. At last, I already saw him. I saw him after long years. Dad? He was very different from the man I used to know. Dad? The man I used to be. The man I used to be my father. He was different. I saw how much he had changed. From physical appearance up to who come, come is he now. How's life in New York, son? It's okay. I have a great career in English. <coughs> <coughs> That's fine, it's fine. <coughs> now that I am already with my father back again, I wanted to rebuild our relationship. Sometimes we do one-on-one -on -one talks, sharing events in our life. We also watch movies together. We made new experiences again. I woke up one day seeing my father alone in our living room. I saw him with a sad face. He was like devastated. I asked him what happened. With a thin smile on my lips, I wanted my dad to feel my presence. That even Helen left him, I'm still by his side. I tried the shoes father gave me. The shoes that reality fit the size of my feet. As I was running outside, I saw father watching over me. It was like that a father watching over his son, guarding if something bad will happen to his son. But then, I felt something unusual. I felt a sudden headache. It was like something crushed my head because of the pain. I cannot anymore felt my surroundings. I cannot anymore hear anything or even see anything clear. I remembered was Someone's calling my name. Keep on repeating and repeating it until everything was completely black. He said that he will never leave me and he will always stay by my side, especially on the day that Helen left me. In the end, he still left me. But I cannot blame him, because now he's in a better place. A place where there's no discrimination and hatred. A place where love and acceptance is seen and shown. A place that he can continue what he loves doing. Someday, he'll be our venue to meet and live again. And I cannot wait for that day to come. The day that I will meet my son again, my one and only son.